Golden Black Live segment two, one of my favorite people. Uh, you know, you and I have known each other for 36 years. You know, and you're only like, you're only like 10 years older than I am, so that's good. No, shoot, <laughs> not quite. <laughs> that welcome back it is everybody. One thing that's good in this world of uh, sometimes discontent. Uh, everybody's happy to see you come back, so well, that's good. You, I mean, what, and it's nice that you're a, you come back as a rock star, and uh, you'll be <laughs> obviously front and center tomorrow for Purdue Northwest, uh, Purdue Penn State, I should say. Uh, good to be back, but no golf here. No golf. Though. I guess the courses are closed in South Carolina. You know, they stay open all year, so we play whenever we can, every day if we can. But we don't play every day, but we could. But uh, that's okay. I'm glad to be here and fun to see you. I remember your mom and dad used to have the players over every yeah. year for basketball, and that was always very enjoyable and always fun. So anytime I see you, I'm happy to be here. Well, you know, it's funny that, um, that those dinners, which were legal by the by NCAA rules, but we had them as uh, uh, for several years uh, when I was with the basketball team as a student manager, but also when I was working in the athletic department, we had more red meat in our house <laughs> than ever than we ever did but my mom uh, rest her soul was about as good as you could be in terms of putting those kind of things together yes, she was. it was yes. it was a great i love red meat i, I do, do. too I, I, don't get me wrong <laughs> i love it too that and the uh the uh the famous roles that bruce weber used to take home with uh by the dozen i think after it was over coach uh, obviously the, the the opportunity to to watch uh uh, your favorite basketball team, and, and uh, this is they're well into the Big Ten season. Very competitive league this year. Yes, it is. Uh, maybe as competitive as, as it's ever been. What's been your thoughts and what you've, what you've seen so far? Well, I'm really impressed with them. They've made improvement. Uh, I think Haas and uh, Swagin have both improved, and the guards have made them much, much better. So they have good pieces. I really enjoy watching them and don't yell at the TV quite <laughs> as much, but uh, I have fun watching them, and it's really enjoyable to see them improve. and. Saw the game against Illinois, and that was great. Because, you know, Illinois is one of our big rivals. So any, anytime you beat them as bad as you did, it was fun. You had the, some of the best games in, in your career uh, against Illinois, some classics, and uh, to say the least. And, and yet, you know, you look at this balance in the league, and there were several years in your, in your time where it was balanced. But with 14 teams, and really 13 of them, and really Rutgers is dangerous, too. It's about as balanced as you've seen in Penn State. Tomorrow, you can't take them no, for granted either. They're tied with us in the league. Yeah. And, uh, there's a story about the Big Ten today in the USA Today uh, newspaper about how the Big Ten may get a lot of teams in the NCAA. So it's very balanced. It's a great race, and, and tomorrow's going to be a big day in the Big Ten race. Yeah, it, and Purdue's schedule gets tough. You know, obviously after tomorrow, you go on the road, and you and uh, Maryland, Nebraska, Michigan State. Nebraska, Maryland, and in Indiana. Uh, Do you ever think, Nebraska, first, you never got a chance to coach against Nebraska in the Big Ten. Uh, it's crazy to think that uh, Maryland and using Maryland and Nebraska as Big Ten teams. No, I, I got to meet Coach Miles at the yeah. Final Four last year. I really like him. Yeah, uh, he's an interesting yeah, guy. When I played at K-State, Nebraska's basketball yeah. wasn't that great. They had great football teams, everybody knows, but now they're back in the basketball world, so that's good to see. And of course, with Maryland being added, and and Rutgers, it's a different league now. So, But I never ever saw the Big Ten ever easy. So every yeah. game was a tough one, no matter where you played, who you played. Fans were always great. So it was always enjoyable, except when you lost. Yeah. Some of your biggest challenges and some of your championship teams were beating Northwestern at that time that were that were at the bottom of the of the heap. But those games, uh, that's that's the definition of why it is difficult, you know, week in and week out. We have some pictures we were going to roll through. This is uh, uh, with with the coach, Coach Bob Knight and Coach Katie in Bob Knight's last game in Mackey Arena. Your your pregame conversations with him because he was always uh, our fans would get on him just a little bit when he would come in. Uh, were you just typically uh, was it fishing stories? Was it talking about the uh, world of college basketball in in those little instances right before game time, or are you just uh, saying hello? Uh, just talking, you know, talk, probably ripping the NCAA about something. <laughs> yeah. uh, how stupid the rules are, or something like that. Who knew something was silly? Did you like? It was know, always fun to talk to. Him. Yeah, last year, you know, you obviously had the thing at the Ag Fish Fry with with Bob, and that was a, a huge hit on both uh, um, yes, having both of you there. Uh, what was that like, just to have that kind of a, get reunited with him and the opportunity to see him uh, again and to spend? Some well, that time was with a him. lot of fun, and we're going to try to do it again, you know, here in the near future. So in some kind of venue. So then, of course, we were with 
in the Trump campaign here, and that was fun to do with him. So Yeah, you uh, were in Indianapolis yeah, for that. Yeah, so uh, then we went to South Bend together, and that was fun. So uh, we talk on the phone probably about once every two weeks. So yeah. uh, he's up in Montana and doing his share of fishing, and I'm in, in Myrtle Beach playing my share of golf and seeing people I enjoy down there. So it's been a good relationship. The world of college basketball, and, and, and certainly both of you, and in your time, uh, you know, you tried to fix the things that you want, you know, from an administrative level or how the game's played, how the game's officiated on down the line. Where do you see it right now? If you were going to, if you were going to put one thing in, in the game now that that isn't that to, could stand to, to help make it just a little bit better, you any any anything as you watch it, the, the too many timeouts at the end, uh, too many free throws. What what do you, how do you? No, view I it? don't have any. I'm not very innovative on that kind of stuff. I don't like the fact that they don't have the jump ball anymore. I'm kind of old school there. I wish we still had the jump ball because there was uh, some uh, technique in it and there was some uh, strategy in it. So I think that you can get more possessions if you could jump the ball and go get it. So about being aggressive and so on. So I really don't have anything I'd like to change. I just like the way the game's played. I think the clock changed up a lot of things. The shooting clock and the three-point shot certainly changed the fact that you never have a comfortable lead. So yeah. oh, absolutely. That's, a, that's a big fact in the game now. Four quarters of the women's game has gone to to try to speed it up, and I think you know some have talked about just because of the, the foul situations at the end of halves and end of games uh, is one thing will be interesting to see. There's that picture with you and Larry Clisby back at that was in Louisville actually. Larry looks Larry looks about yeah he, looks young. He, he, yeah, he that, well, young. that's 20 oh. years ago uh, if you can believe that. <laughs> Talk about you know your relationship. You know, Coach Matt Painter's had a great relation, relationship with Larry, but Larry was obviously such a big part of, of your time at Purdue and, and a guy that you, you you knew you could trust as your play-by-play -play guy, but a guy that was interesting and fun to be around and, and took losing personally. Oh, yeah, he's a special friend because we spent a lot of hours in here in the studio yeah. after games. Uh, a lot of them were, were blue streaks because if we get beat, <laughs> a lot of words in here my mom would not have enjoyed. So... Uh, it, it was a time with, that I spent and became close with, and he was a special guy in my life, so I've really enjoyed our relationship. You know, it's funny. I don't know. We still haven't, I haven't figured out who put some of these videos up, and Jill, I may have seen some as well. The, uh, in the 1988, a lot of your coaches' shows are showing up on YouTube now. Uh oh And they're all good. And they're, they're, there's one set out takes. I still don't know how it got there. Uh, but and, and you're not doing anything. You're doing fine. But it's just some classic, <laughs> classic stuff to see. The, the locker rooms, the 88 season with the locker room after you'd beaten um, – Purdue had beaten Memphis State to, to advance to the Sweet 16, and and a lot of lot of good memories there from that standpoint. When you look back at at, at 25 years of doing this, and maybe going looking back through the through the through your entire life, did you think? I mean, when you were when you were 1957 and graduating from 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 college, did you ever think this was going to be the way it was going to turn out? No, I had no clue. I couldn't have thought this had ever happened to me. Uh, I've been so fortunate to have so many great assistants. Uh, I have so many great bosses. Uh, it's just been a life that I, if I died tomorrow, I could say, hey, I had a great life. I have no qualms. I've been very uh, lucky to know the people I've known. So, and Purdue is so generous to me that it's been unbelievable. So, you know, it's one of those things where you look back and you think, I would have liked to have gone to the Final Four here, but everything else was super. And I think my uh, legacy is that we graduated 92% of our kids. So that was something I was very proud of. When you look back, and, and I don't know you well enough, I don't think you've spent a lot of time thinking about this, but what, it, when, you, when you were growing up as a kid, it, what did you think you were going to be, besides a professional baseball player probably? But what, uh, uh, I mean, you, you I mean your dad no was a gardener. Yeah, he was a florist. Uh, and, your, and your mom was? Yeah, she was a, she had worked as a, dad met her in a hospital in Larned, Kansas, uh -huh. as a cook, and they got married after that. And then she worked in a nickel-dime store downtown yeah. Larned called Duckwall. So, yeah. Uh, she was well known in the city, and he was well known because he sold everybody flowers yeah. and plants and tomatoes. So they were pretty popular in our city. He was best of friends with Chet Cleveland, the chief of police, so I couldn't get away with much. <laughs> yeah. So it was one of those things where everybody knew everybody, and I was very fortunate. I grew up in Warren, Kansas. One of the best things that I happened in my professional life was the ability to, to, to meet your, I think, met your dad, and they, they, I think they both came back in, in the mid-'80s. Uh, and... Uh, different personality than you, though. He was a, a at least he back. seemed to be, yes. yeah. He's laid so back. how did you, is you, are you your mother? I have no clue. Uh, I'm just me. I don't know. <laughs> I just, mom was pretty cool. She was not, 
she didn't have a, a temper or I never saw either. I never saw my mom and dad ever fight. So it was okay. one of those things where, you know, I thought all marriages were perfect. So, <laughs> you know, because my mom, I was the best two people I ever knew in my life is my, my parents. So I was very fortunate to have parents like that. I had a great sister, Norma. So yeah, I met it was Norma. one of those things where we had a very happy family and I was so stupid, I thought we were rich. So, <laughs> so we always had all the food we needed, all the jeans. I wore jeans most of the time. Yeah. So, you know, I had a very happy uh, young life. And I still do have a great life. And that's so. a good way to be. One of my favorite pictures there, you with John Wooden and Glenn Robinson. I, I'm not sure if that was taken, uh, where that was taken. Um, two guys that, uh, outside of yourself, that epitomized Purdue basketball. First, you know, you had a special relationship with John Wooden over the years and, and uh, his, his impact on you as a coach. And things that he did you and did you talk to him? I know you talked oh, yeah. to him some, but uh, uh, what would he say to you? Out, he he wouldn't chastise you for your some of your antics on the on the court. Oh yeah, oh, yes he, would. he did. Oh, okay, yeah. so but that was good. I needed it. But uh, <laughs> he was a special person in my life. Uh, we went to California to visit him yeah. uh, as a John Purdue Club uh, group. Uh, he was a person that gave me a play when I was a young coach at Beloit, Kansas, and we used that play to win a lot of games yeah. at the JUCO and. And late, they were, it was a last second play. Yeah. So uh, I could still run it when yeah. I had to. So uh, we called it Z because there was a Z cut in it. So it was one of those things where he helped me. And uh, he, was a, he was a great mentor for a lot of coaches. And you know, he kind of told me that probably I shouldn't get as many technicals as I should. And <laughs> I think that he was probably right. But I'm just me. So it was one of those things where I don't know if I listened or not. But I, I always respected him, uh, followed his practice schedule almost to the T. Yeah. He gave clinics at 7-Up Clinic. So... Uh, I would take his notebook he'd, he'd buy when you went to a yeah. clinic and use his practice schedule most of the T. So we were always, I thought, pretty highly organized, and maybe some of the assistants thought we were too organized. But anyway, uh, it was one of those things where he was big in my life, and I've always enjoyed our relationship. And that was, a, I think that was a Player of the Year trophy. I think that, it was. It that they were presenting, we were presenting Glenn then. So uh, maybe it was the uh, John Wooden uh, trophy. So... Uh, he was. He's always been a special person in my life, and they still give out uh, wooden wisdom yeah. quotes uh, on our on our text yeah. on our phone. So I use those. Try to use them when I was at St. John's to hand out to the players. So, so uh, yeah, special guy. We all know he was a three-time uh, player of the year here, wasn't he? And three-time All-American. He yep. was player of the year in '32. Yeah. So, so. Uh, he was a guy that's I think special in our lives. I had a lot of great mentors. Uh, I, I Tex Winter was special in my yeah. life, and. Uh, uh, Eddie Sutton probably was the best coach I've, I was ever around on a lot, daily basis for four years. And uh, Sam Butterfield, Hutz Juco, was a great coach. And Bud Presley out in, in Menlo Park, California. So, and I've had a lot of great assistants. Yeah. I mean, that, that's been unbelievable. So I spend most of my winter months watching some of my ex-assistants coach on TV. Thank God they're on TV, so I get to watch them and yeah. enjoy it. And, yeah. and Kathleen's always yelling. What are you yelling at? So it's one of those things where... I've had a lot of fun watching those guys. He used to put on every day, which I think is one of the great things that you get if you're a part of any part of the program, the emphasis of the day. And back in those days, at least, you know, guys would listen. I'm not saying they wouldn't listen now, but it, uh, did you th did that come to you every – did you – it was part of your workflow. Did you come up with that every day? I mean, in the, in the, in the morning, like a particular time, you said, this is what we're going to focus on, or, or was it just when you were putting yeah, that I practice? Yeah, I would use study? it uh, from where, different places. I've heard things I thought was, uh, uh, you know, quotable for my players and yeah. for a life lesson. So I got that in Tex Winter. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I mean, it was a great Tex thing. Winter was the coach at K-State when I played uh, baseball and football and ran indoor track there. But I uh, didn't play basketball my junior and senior year. I played at Garden City Junior College for two years. But Tex is one of those guys that I idolized and looked up to. And he always had uh, uh, one of the quotes of the day for something that would be a life lesson. So I got that, and I started doing that in high school when I started coaching at Beloit. So use it every day and every coaching job I ever had for 50 years, so, except at St. John's. And I didn't get to coach much there, but it was one of those things where when I was the head coach, we used it every day. Yeah, and it made an impact. I think at least guys would read it, whether they would follow it all the time was not, but they no, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't always do that. But uh, you, you've had some you've had some great characters uh, throughout the years, and some guys. Have there been guys over you know that you've stayed in touch with that that maybe you didn't have? You don't have to name names, but you didn't maybe have the best relationship as a coach to player that has surprised you that you now hear from all the time. 
Well, I don't know. They don't surprise me, but I hear, I hear from, I was when I came back from the Steelers in 58, hurt my knee, came home, uh, back to Kansas, and got a job at Beloit, Kansas, and I started teaching when I was 22. The players, or the freshmen that year were 14, so those guys are 72 now. Yeah. So we talked, one of those guys, Hot Rod Wilson, at, yeah. uh, he's in Ellsworth, Kansas now, we talk and I, we talk once a week, so yeah. uh, we still talk. Uh, players I had at Hutz Juco, Bob Love and I talk once in a while, he lives in Wichita, so yeah. I've talked to a lot of my players a lot. Troy Lewis, I've talked to uh, Greg Eifert, so it's one of those things where I've talked to a lot of the players that I used to coach, yeah. a lot of times. And it has, it has to be fun to have, you know, a, a guy like Greg Eifert who has a son now that's on the team and, and you have that, have that opportunity. And the interesting thing about your guys is that uh, a lot of quality individuals. There was, no, there was a correlation between high-level individuals even when they were in college. I mean, not that they were all perfect, but you had some guys that have gone on to do some really good things oh, as have. people. I mean, that's, yeah, Kevin Stallings now is at Pittsburgh. His son's the catcher for the Pirates. Yeah, so, I knew that. And he starts uh, started some of the games last year. And then Greg Eifert's son uh, plays for the Bengals at tight end. So yeah. uh, a lot of people I watch in different sports that, that played for the guys that I coach. So it's been a very interesting scenario. Caleb Swanigan and Glenn Robinson and I'm, I, are guys that are at least at a very elite level. You know, probably going to be first th- uh, Caleb's got a great chance to be a, a first-team All-American, as Glenn was. Uh, you ever seen? Uh, you don't see a lot of guys like Caleb Swanigan in terms of that body type and play the way he plays. You haven't seen many guys that can rebound like him, I assume. No, I you no know, Roosevelt Barnes, his yeah. stepfather, yeah. Uh, and I we saw him in, in New York when they played uh, Arizona State yes. this year. So I got to see Roosevelt yeah. Barnes and and uh, give him a chest bump. So yeah. we, he played for me here. Yeah. So uh, I'm just so tough, happy to see how, how he's done uh, uh, with uh, his son, stepson. So one of those things where, hey, I'm happy for him, and I hope that he becomes the best player in the nation. So he gets drafted for the first round because he is playing excellent right now. You seen, I haven't seen many guys that play. He, he plays hard every, yes. every possession. Stays in the rebound area, stays in good position, uh, thinks ahead. Uh, uh, and then I think Haas has really improved too. So the other big guy. So it's one of those things where I just enjoy watching him get better. Yeah. Matt has always been a problem solver, so it seems like, seems like he's done a great job of getting his players to improve. Two of your best players that, that have kind of, and, and I think Isaac Haas actually, you, you could debate this, was further along. Uh, but Steven Scheffler, Jim Rowinski, and I, you didn't have Jim from the get go, but you developed him a great deal. Two guys that, uh, you know, Took that took that position in, in the middle very seriously and and got became uh, all Big Ten not only all Big Ten but Big Ten Player of the Year. Isaac Haas is making that incremental improvement certainly and 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 yet there's always frustration. He's not as good as he as he may be a year from now. But are fans just way too impatient? Oh, they always are. You know. <laughs> but he's got he's got good hands. So yeah. when you got good hands as a big guy, you got a shot. So. If you get good position, you got a shot. And uh, you know, if you work on the drills we worked on, if Brandon Brantley hasn't even worked on the drills yeah. we worked on, he'll be fine. So I know Brandon will make him do the things that he had to do. So it's one of those things where I just enjoy watching him play in cycle. We always played four round one. We always had a low post man. Yeah. And uh, I just enjoy watching him and be uh, as successful as, as he is and improve. I just see his improvements have been astonishing. So that's that's been really exciting. Gene Cady Play Hard uh, merchandise, which you can get at University Spirit. Uh, uh, that trade, that, that you know, you, we've talked a lot about Purdue football and its ability, need to get an identity uh, back to where it needs to be. Uh, you guys, uh, all the way through your t- tenure, and, and, and Coach Matt Painter's kept it pretty much, that has been Purdue basketball. And when they talk about it on a national level, that's what they talk about. Is that you think that's as much of your legacy as anything else? Just that whole whole notion of we're going we're going to play hard every possession. Well, play hard is something that we had at Arkansas when yeah. I was Eddie Sutton on the seat of our pants. Yeah. So I brought it here. I brought it to Western Kentucky when I went there. Jill Spencer, uh, yeah, who I called a, a dear friend, and and uh, Kathleen calls her my agent. But yeah, she is. She and Kathleen's the one <laughs> who started that brand, and uh, it's one of those things that. I wasn't really part of it. I just did what they told me. So it's been fun to see it.
kind of become productive. Yeah, it is. It is fun, and you're following good people with Jill and Kathleen on on that front to be able to do that. You have that opportunity also uh, to look back and and uh, you know you, you get a guy. I know I think the Arizona State game they had you on. Uh, uh, Jay Billis was there, and it's fun to see those see those people and still. I mean, when you, when you're in front of 14,000 people, and you made a living of doing that, but it, and you have a bobblehead. What goes through your head? I mean, now, I mean, is it? Uh, it, it I know. The lucky guy. Yeah, I'm a lucky guy. So you know, uh, it, it's hard to imagine that would ever happen to me when I was an eighth, eighth, uh, eighth grader at Lawrence Junior High that I'd ever become a basketball coach here. But I've been very, as I said, very, very fortunate to have the coaches that were my mentors and the players that played for me and the assistant coaches. So. Uh, it was one of those things you go through your life and you get lucky and you work hard and you, you, you have the right people around you. You never do anything that's, which I think is special and I think my life's been pretty special because of the people around yeah. me So, uh, and the people I've worked for. So I've been very fortunate to work for a place like, it seemed like Purdue hired people that had a special uh, understanding of what it took to be a team person. Because yeah. you know, when I came here, George King was the athletic director and had a lot of great guys around me, yeah. Dave Alexander and Bob DeMoss and Dr. Combs and uh, John uh, DeCamp. So yeah. I had so many great people to work with here, and I was very, very fortunate. Yeah, and the opportunity to, to have have success and then build that build on that to, to six Big Ten championships and and uh, uh, umpteen uh, trips to the NCAA tournament. All right, so. If you're looking at Purdue down the road and looking at the, the landscape of college basketball, you've watched a lot of college basketball. Other teams that, uh, that you've seen this year that are really going to be, uh, I mean, obviously Duke and Kentucky and the, and the usual Blue Bloods are there, but anybody else that you've watched this year that's really impressed you is uh, a, a, not it's just a dark horse, but somebody that we may not be talking about that could be a, could be a, a team to watch for in the NCAA tournament. Well, I like Nebraska. Yeah. I like the way they're playing. I like Wisconsin. They're yeah. playing well. And, uh, Maryland's leading the league yeah. right now, so a uh, great I, schedule. Too. Yeah, and uh, well, I don't know all that, yeah. so I'm not like yeah. I used to yeah. would have known if I were here. So it's one of those things where uh, you know a lot. I like a lot of schools that I see play, but mostly I just watch Big Ten schools yeah. if I can. All right, well, Coach Dean Katie, if you're coming to the game tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon, I should say at noon. It is sold out in Mackey Arena, and he's got a lot to do with that reason, and also pretty good bass Purdue basketball team. But he'll be honored at halftime. You have to get he's a 2,000 bobbleheads tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure that that will be a, a, a hot ticket and a hot item as we lead into a, a Big Ten Saturday. Not too many Big Ten Saturdays left in Purdue's home schedule as well. So, Coach, thanks so much for your Thank time. Thank you, Alan. Enjoyed it. And uh, you're going to be around town for a, a little bit of time here upcoming? We are. We're going to move here. We're building a house, and so we don't have a house. So we're living in a hotel right now. Okay. So we got to come back here and stay a while. Uh, Dick Funk, who's at Kentland, has yeah. been nice enough to offer a, a condo to us here in town. So we're going to be in Lafayette for a few months until we get our house finished. You'll be on the dinner circuit, yeah, maybe. I think we come here in February, so we'll see a lot of you. Hopefully and, we'll be able to follow the team wherever they go next. All right, that sounds good. There's going to be a lot of road trips uh, for the Boilermakers uh, uh, upcoming. Coach, thanks again so Thank much. Thank you, Alan. We'll take Always a, a pleasure to be with you. We'll take a two-minute break, bring Brian Newbert in. We'll talk Purdue football recruiting, a little Purdue basketball as well. Uh, and our final segment of Golden Black Live.